Welcome to the Beyond Jiu Jitsu podcast. This is episode number 88. 88. Boom. What's up, Adam? What's up, Kieran? I wish when you said 88, we had like something to say when they read out bingo numbers. Two fat ladies. Is that what they say for yeah, 88? 88, two fat ladies. And that, that's actually showing my hand a little bit. I went to a lot of fucking bingo growing up. My, <laughs> mom, my mom dragged me to so many bingo. I know all of them, like uh, legs 11, and then everyone whistles. And, oh, my Dude. God. <laughs> yeah, I'm so bogan. <laughs> 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 what an introduction. Uh, so today we're talking about – it's a bit of a different topic. And, Adam, you came up with the concept – Ironically enough, when you were talking to the class last night. I training, often drunkenly ramble to the well, class. I mean, you impart wisdom and knowledge. So, drunkenly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you drinking? <laughs> Stop drinking at the gym, Adam. <laughs> Take a shot. Um, so when everyone's lined up after class, uh, a lot of the time you you have something to say. Sometimes it could be along the lines of like an announcement, like an, a notice for the gym. And other times it's like, um, you know, motivational or – uh, in this case, you were talking about the importance of still training intentionally when you have a smaller class. So Yeah, so sometimes at the end of class, you know, we line everyone up predominantly because I like high fives. Yeah. And it's I can maximize my high five intake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. When I line everyone up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like you said, it's a good opportunity if you have something to say to your students while they're all standing there paying attention. But sometimes as well, you know, it's not like I went into, it's not like I woke up yesterday and was like, right, at the end of class, I'm going to say this about small classes. Mm. You know, it's just something sometimes, you know, there could be something that happens in class, during class, mm. and then I'll take the opportunity to talk about it when everyone's lined up. So. We had a particularly small class last night. The gym was really quiet for whatever reason. People being lazy, I think, is the predominant <laughs> reason uh, here in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. Weather, weather. That's uh, can be very, I don't know. So we have a lot of people wrapped in bubble wrap in this in this part of. So when it's Sydney. when it's raining, they they stay home. Man, they'll be like, oh, but they said it was going to sprinkle, so I'm not going to the gym. <laughs> or, oh, it's half a degree colder today. Yeah. Too cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's too cold. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, so this often happens in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. Whenever there's any sort of change in the climate, you go through quite a period of, of not many people turning up to the gym. Even, uh, you know, Samir, our training partner, his, his partner, she's a really high level CrossFit competitor, and she was saying that her CrossFit gym is the same. Like, there's empty. like, there's like yep. it's like empty. Yep. I don't know if regular gyms like Fitness First or whatever. Oh, 100% uh, that would experience the same. The, would, uh, but I mean, you go to the gym, right? Yeah. Don't, uh, is your regular gym a bit quieter or you go at a quiet time? I go anyway. at a quiet time. I go, yeah. you know, I'm unemployed, so I go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I you're, go when everyone's working. Bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But um, yes, so last night was quiet. And so I essentially wanted to touch on that you still can, need to, should train properly, even when it's quiet, right? There's a couple of reasons why. First off, it can be a great opportunity to get more focus from your instructor. Some some gyms I've, I've had students come and train with me who enjoy the fact that we're a smaller gym. I mean like a physically smaller gym, um, regardless of whether the gym had 50 members or 5,000 members, the size of the mat is quite small. So you could only fit so many people in a class, right? And so I've had students actually enjoy that it's a smaller gym because they're like, nah, man, it, like, you know, I've been to other gyms that are packed and really big and busy and man, no one even knows my name. And, you know, I'm like, I don't really, I'll be lucky to one class a week actually get some direct uh, instruction from the instructor just because of the sheer size. Right. So when it's a small class, you have an opportunity to get way more direct instruction, which can be a really good thing, you know, almost like a mini private, if you will. Yeah. So that's, that's one factor. But the other, and I would 
say the more important factor is that there is well, kind of twofold. There's always ways to train regardless of who turns up. So let's say you're someone who's a bit more in the middle, let's just say a purple belt. So you're right in the middle for argument's sake. So you've got white and blue belts below you, brown and black belts above you. So on any given day, you could be training with people who are going to beat the crap out of you or people who you're going to beat the crap out of them. Okay. Let's say you turn up to a small class and you're the purple belt and you're the highest ranked person there and there's only a bunch of other white belts for you to train with. Okay. Let's say, for example, you can still train properly and learn a lot. So I said this to you and to everyone else last night that Gordon Ryan recently said in some sort of interview or post or whatever that when people say, oh, I train three times a day every day and people just assume that means that they're going to war three times a day every day. No, man, like you can't, you know, and even Gordon Ryan was saying a lot of his his training, like you can't do every single round, every single training session at that intensity. So he'll do a lot of like rolls with lower belts and a lot of learning can be done with those lower belts, you know? Uh, And there's lots of ways you can structure it as well. So you can give yourself a handicap, right? Let's say it's still comp training, but you're far more skilled than everyone that you're training with, right? So um, so you're still rolling hard, but let's say, let's say it's me and I'm rolling with white and blue belts in the gym and it's comp training or whatever. How do I still get a lot out of that as a black belt training with white and blue belts? Why well, give myself a handicap? I go, okay, well, they're 10 minute rounds or whatever. Okay. Well, uh, I want to sub that white belt 10 times in the 10 minutes, you know, otherwise I lose. That's like my handicap that I've given myself. You know, the blue belt, I got to sub him eight times in the 10 minutes, otherwise I lose or whatever it is, right? Uh, So you can give yourself handicaps. Maybe it's not comp training, so you're not doing uh, physically hard training. How can I still get a lot out of that? Okay, I'm really shit at half guard on this side. I'm going to work on that. You know, having targeted training, like the example we've given plenty of times in the past, you don't just walk into a gym and be like, yeah, three bicep curls here and I'll do one squat over there. No, like you have an, at a minimum, you know the muscles you're working out, right? And probably the exercises. So same with jujitsu, come in. Okay, well, I'm rolling with people who are uh, not on my level. So I'm going to work on things that is going to be, again, kind of like a handicap. All right, I'm going to do I'm terrible at lasso spider guard, right? That's what I'm going to try today, right? So there's still a lot of learning that can be done when you're training with people who maybe aren't on your level. If it's the other way around and you're the purple belt and everyone is outranks you or is more skilled than you, well, that's cool because that's also part of jiu-jitsu, just getting an ass beating sometimes. Yeah. Men, like... There's no one who made it to black belt being like, I won every single day at jujitsu. There is no way, right? And even for me, I'll have, I'll have times where I roll with, I'll give you a perfect example. I rolled with you two days ago, right? And we did a, a specific sort of thing where it was you had to pass or sweep or submit. Bro, that was yesterday. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two days fucking, ago. Fucking gaslight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually reminded me. It was like Hanada, my wife, we were talking the other day. I can't remember what we were talking about, but it got onto like kind of joking that she was trying to gaslight me. And then that led to like being like, then she started gaslighting me about whether I was being gaslit. <laughs> just like became this inception thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so, so rolling, we're rolling we had a roll and, um, and yeah, I swept you. So it's not like I lost the roll, but even for me, like I was, I was unhappy about how it happened and played out and it just like things that happened within that little specific, um, you know, pass, sweep, submit roll mm. didn't, for my standards and what I expect from myself yep. didn't happen the way I, I wanted them to happen. I was very and happy with that because one time you told me that if I get to my over under position on you, that's like you being like, nah, man, that's fucked. I, I, 
I shouldn't have let that happen. And I did. And I was like, ha motherfucker. Pretty much. <laughs> and, um, you know, so um, that's pass, still obviously. for me, like I lost, right? Like, I mean, yeah, it's not the same as, oh, I got my ass kicked and tapped yep. over and over and over. But so that's just part of jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the next thing I want to say is that you just got to take some responsibility and still turn up. Yep. And train. And I mean, turn up as in, okay, you've already turned up and it's a small class, but turn up. Like it doesn't matter that it's a small class. The only difference is that, oh, instead of doing like, let's say we're doing five, five rounds tonight, whatever, mm-hmm. for a number. Okay. Well, instead of me doing, having five different partners, I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to have four different partners and I'll have to go with that dude twice. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, you know, there's not a big difference. It is very easy to train hard and be pumped when the gym's full and the atmosphere is popping. And don't get me wrong, that's awesome. I yeah. love it too. Same. Right? Because, it, yeah, it is, it, it's, you know, when- It's better. Straight up. Yeah. I mean, you can't argue that it's not really enjoyable to train when the atmosphere is popping and heaps of people are in the gym and all your friends are there. Yeah. That's awesome. But- the same time it's like you just got to have some discipline and you can still train properly when it's a small class i think yeah. what i said last night is you know like it's easy to train when you're motivated yeah you know it's it's harder to train when you don't want to train so it's kind of like training when you're pumped for it and the gym's full and whatever I don't know. It's like eating ice cream when you're having a sugar craving. Mm. Very easy, very enjoyable, right? You know, like or or you know, let's let's put it the other way around. So it's it's very it's very easy not to eat junk food if you're not hungry. Mm. Right? So that's kind of like when it's a busy class and whatever, it's like, yeah, cool, all the pieces fit together. Very easy not to eat like shit cuz you're not hungry. But you know, it's a small class, you know. Right, so now so you are, you now are you hungry. are hungry. Yeah, and you're inside of a McDonald's. Yeah, but you're still not allowed to eat sort of thing. It's yeah. like, man, you just got to have a little bit more discipline. You know, you're not going to die, mm. right? Mm. So you can still turn up and train properly, right? You're just missing multiple different partners. And yeah, mm. like create your own atmosphere. We went for a huge period of time. It's actually, let me take a sip of this freshly brewed coffee that- <laughs> My barista friend Kieran made Arabica beans. <laughs> <laughs> Free trade. No monkeys were harmed. <laughs> well, we can't promise that. Coffee sip. Almost made me spit my coffee all over the mic, bro. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I fucking you no fucking idea. lost me, bro. <laughs> I lost you. You lost me. I took a fucking 20, 20 fucking minute coffee sip. What are you talking about? I don't know, the monkey, monkeys, the monkey. The, We're talking just, about monkeys in jiu-jitsu. Monkeys in jiu-jitsu. That'd be very good at jiu-jitsu. Oh, okay. So, yeah. um, so we, it's actually quite, quite funny when I think about it because when the gym first opened, there was less, the timetable, right? It was predominantly gi, way more gi than no gi, right? And then it's funny how it's shifted. Now it is um, maybe 60% gi, maybe a little bit more. But at the moment, the, the timetable is about to change because we're redoing our website and everything. And once that's all finalized, it'll change to 50-50. Mm. 50% gi, 50% no gi. There'll be the exact even amount of classes. Yeah. But in the beginning, um, even in the short almost four years that the gym's been open – how it's changed that people didn't four years ago, people like, I mean, people wanted to do no gi, but at least the, the, the students that I had or the demographic of the area that the gym's in, people weren't really interested in no gi, right? Like almost no one turned up to, um, to the no gi classes. And we had this one on, which we still have Thursdays at six thirty, And for, Man, for such a long time, it was just like me and these two or three other guys that were the only people. Well, I mean, obviously I was there because mm. I teach the class, but there was just these only two or three guys who would turn up to this class. And that was it. No one else did that no gi class. That's they a small group private. Were, mate. Yeah, right. But 
man, that was some of the best training that us as that little small group had. It was like we knew it was kind of like our own little, it felt like when you've got a friend who's got some mats in their garage and you just have a few friends who go over and go to war, you know, think of that. It, was, kind of felt, that it kind of felt like that, yeah. you know, cause it was us the same sort of three, four, five people yeah. every Thursday. And we did that for months. And yeah. it's funny when I think about it, cause now I've got this huge demand from my students, like we want more Nogi, yeah. more Nogi, you know, like chanting, yeah. picketing out the yeah. front of the nogi gym. Robs yeah, no, <laughs> nogi robs. <laughs> Throwing torches at the gym. <laughs> um, so yeah, but that would change to completely 50, 50 soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite funny when I think about it, that the smallest class of the week, was that one particular and now it's class. Packed. Yeah. And now it's one of the busier classes. And, uh, and yeah, we used to train super hard. I mean, it was some of my best training that class every single week, you know? So it just re requires a little bit more self-discipline mm. of like, okay, cool. Like I'm just missing the, the by default getting pumped up because the gym's full. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I take the approach that, when whenever I'm rolling in in the small classes with and, and maybe I feel like I've got an advantage on most of my training partners, whether it be skill or weight or both, I like to give them or like offer up positions that I want to work with. Like I'll like literally just give them a single leg and see if they take it, and then go for a specific sweep that we learned in the the uh, that um, structure. I'm blanking on the word. The seminar. The seminar with, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with Kevin. Yeah, with Kevin. Um, so like or do something like that or or let them take me down and like go into a turtle position and fight out a turtle or, or whatever. So yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. I try to give that position or sometimes- Or even something as simple as, okay, well, I'm going to try pass to the other side. That yeah. is my less favorable side. Or do a side. different different pass or do my my um, B game pass, like a, a, a double under pass instead of over under or, you know, the, the stack pass instead of whatever. Or um, or I go into the thing, uh, go into it thinking, okay, I'm going to hit- the same sub on this person, even though they know it's coming four times in a row, alternating left and right or something like that. And Was that your approach with the bow and arrows <laughs> last night against Sammy? <laughs> Poor dude. I feel so bad. Yeah. yeah. I went, all right. I, I had it in my mind. I, I, I hit that takedown I was talking about, the single leg. And then I was like, okay, I want to hit a, I want a bow and arrow and I want to alternate left, uh, right and left, right and left. And I'll tell him, I'm like, it's coming. Like I'm, I'm going for it. <laughs> See if he can stop it. I mean, that's fun. If the if your opponent knows exactly what sub you're doing and you can still hit it, yeah. then that means you're improving. In my mind, maybe not. Maybe I what, should have done something else. What was what was funny was me seeing the frustration on your face with the the few times you. Oh, firstly, it was specific training, so there oh. is no real winner or loser. You're doing even it's training. There's no winner or loser. Bro, I was you're so mad training. About that. Yeah. But the 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 times you lost to Nicholas. Yes, Bro, <laughs> I was furious. Nicholas, if you're listening to this, mate, you have no idea. In, internally, I was like going to war with myself because my guard is not my strongest suit. And Nicholas, uh, he's I've got like 20 kilos on the guy and he was passing my guard and I was like fucking – Mad, bro. I was yeah. so mad about it. I was like, I'm going to smash I, you. I could <laughs> see. <laughs> when rolls are reversed, I'm coming for that you, brother. so good. <laughs> yeah. And then when you were on top, man, you pulled his pants down so far. Yeah, I didn't even realize they were coming down that far. I didn't give a fuck because like it, over under position. That drawstring That drawstring grip, grip yeah. is essential. You do not let go. So I, I pull people's pants down inadvertently without all the time and I just don't care. I just keep going. Uh, but I didn't realize that I was like legit yeah. pulling these pants off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, Nick. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like it was still – so there was – yeah, it was really small class last night. There was five of you and one person wasn't rolling because yep. they were injured. Yep. So there was four just, rolling, just yeah. yeah, just the four of you, right? And obviously then as well, I think if you I mean, as well, uh, a chunk of the responsibility falls on the instructor to then have the ability to on the fly structure the class maybe slightly differently to best get uh, to to get the most out of the students that you have because mm. it's very easy if the class is packed just to be like, all right, guys, you know, we're going to do eight eight-minute rounds or something mm -hmm. and just by sheer volume there will always be someone that you can find to roll and there will mm. always be someone who needs a rest round mm. or always be someone who wants to have a comp roll or whatever. But when it's smaller you kind of, you know, maybe need to – 
be a little bit more hands-on, structured a little different so you can get a lot out of those small few students. Yeah. And I think, you know, last night, even though there was only four of you rolling, it was structured in a partic- particular way that it was quite hard. Like you did – what was it? It was only a five minute round in the middle. But yeah, it was a shark tank. Yeah, but yep. the, the way the shark tank was structured was, I mean, most of you were pretty dead at the end of five minutes, mm. right? Remember, Ol- Olic looked like he, he wanted to puke, right? You were <laughs> lucky. You got the first round, yeah. so that's the easy one. Yeah, I was, trying to, I was trying to structure it. Whenever we do stuff like that, I tried to put myself in the more difficult position. So I thought going first would have been harder, but obviously well, last it's was kind a lot of harder. F- first and last are mm-hmm. the hardest because when you go first, yes, you're the freshest, but so is everyone else. Yeah. When you go last, you're then the last person in the middle after having multiple rounds already. Mm. So that's really hard. It's in the middle that's the easier spot because you kind of get the yeah. best of both worlds. I like when you when you when it's odd numbers, so you assign numbers to who gets the rest round. I like being last then because it's the hardest. Yeah. So I like try to, I mean, because I'm, I'm competing soon and no one else in the gym is competing. That's why I'm saying this, not because I'm trying to be a big dog or anything, just because I'm trying to like, uh, you know, elevate my training. Like you said, get the most out of your comp training when it's a small group or or whatever it is. So I'm trying to like put myself in these, the more difficult spot, like the one that no one wants. I want that because it's going to be more difficult. So in my mind, I thought I'll go first because it will be the hardest, but obviously Going last would have been a bit better, but fuck it. It's irrelevant. We, we'll do it again tonight. Don't worry about it. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I really but, liked that training. I don't know if we've spoken about it. That training that we did where you made like a ring with oh, the belts. fucking brutal. And you had to do um, 10 burpees. You had to like, okay, so there's a ring of belts in the middle of the mats. You're across from your opponent. and The ring is not important, by the way. Yeah, it was yeah. just to have a, a, a very tangible goal. Barrier. Yeah, but of, yeah. Of when you were in or out. Yeah, so you, what you had to do is you had to like pay an entry fee to get into the ring uh, with kind 10 of, burpees. Yeah. And whoever got in the ring first, they were t- up by two points. And you had, how long did you have? One minute. One minute. You had one minute to to score. Like you, whoever had the most points at the end of the minute wins. Yeah. So well, hang on. Yeah. Let me, let me give you a bit more of a story. So this is, again, uh, so like I just said, part of the responsibility falls onto the instructor. This is something that I could do or any instructor could do to structure the class, to make it, uh, I mean, there's heaps of benefits to it, but you know, you could do something like this when it's a small class because mm-hmm. you only have two people rolling at a time, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you wouldn't want to do this with a big class cause you're not going to get through enough people. Yeah. Um, so you could do it like that. You, this is also good because it, just mixes it up. It's something different than mm-hmm. just specific training or regular rounds. But what we were trying to simulate was competition specific, a competition specific environment, which was that you're incredibly fatigued because you've done a, a quick set of explosive movements, which in this case we were to get that fatigue, we were using burpees. But you were racing. The burpees yeah, were raced. Right. And then we were trying to go, okay, now you're a little bit fatigued because you've just done a set, you've essentially just done a sprint, Mm. right? But you need to perform. So you've got one minute to score. So yeah, it was two people outside the ring. The ring was just there. So you had who could enter the ring first. Mm. You had to do 10 burpees, right? And then move into the ring. The first person in the ring, yeah, then got to start the one minute roll up two points. Right. So essentially the trade-off was, well, if your burpees are slow, you're then like the pressure is on you that you have to score yep. in the one minute. Otherwise you lose the match. Right. Whereas if you did your burpees quicker, yeah, it might've cost you a bit more, but now, you know, the pressure's on them to score in theory, you could stall out the minute. Mm. And, um, and it was funny because when we started it, I'd kind of said, uh, Oh, and that was a small class too, actually. I think maybe six or seven people. There weren't a huge amount yeah, of people that. in that yep. class. And and like I said, you don't want to do this with a big class because you can't – not everyone's going to get a turn. And I remember saying, all right, guys, like it's going to be hard, but, you know, you're probably not really going to do more than two minutes because you'll – you know, obviously someone needs to win. So you'll do your 10 burpees, your one-minute round. Someone had to win. 
then you'll go again. And then like, by yeah, the, the time you're already doing your- You have to say the winner stays in. Sorry, yeah, yeah the yeah, winner yeah. stays in, yeah. And then, you know, by the time you're doing your second set of burpees and another minute, round, like fatigue starting to kick in. And I kind of said, man, Max, you're going to do two, three minutes. Yeah, it'll be a hard two, three minutes because it's 30 burpees and mm. three one minute rounds. But, you know, then you're going to get, then you're going to be out and you're going to get to rest while we work through everyone else, right? You're probably going to then get five, six minutes of rest. Mm. And uh, Kieran decides to go on and win like, I don't know, seven in a row or something <laughs> like that, which I think the first few, you also got the 10 burpees out first. Yep. But then, man, I remember there was even someone who said to me, who was like, man, don't make him do the burpees anymore. He suffered enough. And I was like, he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, man, you were not, not struggling as in, oh, Kieran's unfit and straight, like struggling as in as really hard yeah bro i was and like so, laying down and just standing up <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so it got to the point that i remember you know people were doing their 10 burpees and jumping in the ring and still waiting 30 40 seconds for you to finish your 10 so they were you were coming in the ring way way more fatigued than them by this point you've done a, a, a culmination of 60 burpees right and six one minute rounds they're coming in well rested, not out of gas at all, and up two points. And then you were still in the one minute scoring and winning the match. <laughs> Hence why you would then have to stay in again. It's fun. <laughs> and it, and I it went for so long that I had to end up changing it, being like, okay, no more burpees. We're just continuously shark tanking Kieran until someone scores points on him. Yeah. Right. And then class is over. Yeah. It kept going for so long. And um and Man, yeah, we haven't spoken about that training on the podcast, but it was, man, I cracked up so much because when we started, the people who were watching were like laughing and making jokes. And I remember saying like, guys, this wasn't supposed to be funny. This is supposed to like suck yeah. in, in like, you know, in all the good sense of sucking. Right. Yeah. And then it was funny. Once everyone had had a turn, Marcus, one of the blue belts, he goes, and he, I think he had just like had his turn and like he was having a rest. He was like, now that we've all had a turn, he's like, it's not so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's not funny anymore. Yeah, it's not funny anymore. You know, it was all funny yeah. watching everyone else do it. But yeah. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a punish, right? Oh, yeah. But I mean, that's a, a great example of how you can, I mean, that we did because we were trying to specifically replicate a competition competition scenario, but at the same time, it's a great way that we were able to train really hard in a small class. It's yeah. also something different, so yeah. it's like fun, right? We're bringing like a dynamic side to not bringing a dynamic side to jujitsu, but it is fun to to mix it up. And because if you train enough, if it's jujitsu something you do, man, like it can get repetitive, like anything, you know, you want to. Mm, I love those. I love those classes when you're like, okay, everyone line up uh, on the fucking window. You're like, yeah, yeah please, I like let's those fucking go. Yeah. I used to hate them um, because like I was shit and I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you, ne they suck in the beginning when you always lose. Yeah, and you suck. You go in, you lose in 20 seconds, you go to the end of the line. Yeah. Like, Fuck. <laughs> yeah. But, now, but when you start being able to win some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've like, my, my goal is once I get in, not to get out, like yeah. to go the whole, the whole, whole, whatever it is, the whole 20 minutes, however long we're doing it, don't yeah. get out. Like, yeah, man. And we used win. to, we used to do those in Brazil and man, I remember like some classes, uh, you would see like Langy stay in the middle. He like, he would stay the whole class. And these were two hour classes that wow. I've, I remember seeing classes where he was like an hour and a half in the middle. That's just crazy. like, crazy, you know, just wouldn't lose. But it's and, and these training. are like other black belts trying to do whatever the position was or whatnot. But it's different training. Cause like if you're in the middle, you're obviously you're fighting fatigue. You're trying to pace yourself in a, in a way to, to, to stay in it, but you need to match your opponent's intensity. You need to shut down what they're doing. You need to conserve your energy. If you're coming in fresh, you're exploding. Like it's different yeah. training for everyone. So it's not like, uh, you know, Langy's getting more benefit out of it. He's just getting different training. He's like running a marathon when everyone else is running hundred meter sprints. Yeah you know, trying to match his level. So, you know, either way it's good, but yeah, I like that training. Yeah, I me too. I quite, I really I quite like enjoy it. that. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, the biggest, the biggest hurdle that you're going to have in these small classes is the self-responsibility and discipline mm -hmm. you have to have 
You're like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm still here and I'm still – like I've made the effort to turn up, right? Mm. Let's train. Mm. It's kind of like going to the gym by yourself. It can be a, a bit of a – a bit of a grind. It's easier to do it when you've got some, a friend there with you lifting weights. And it's easy to rock up, go through the motions, not really get anything done and then fuck off. You've got to take some responsibility, people, and, yeah. and, and actually get it done. Yeah, it could be hard. Like going into those comp training sessions, regardless of whether it's a small class or not, but particularly when it's a small class, Sometimes when I know what you've – or know of what you have planned or you have something, you know, like we're doing a, a – eight-minute Tabata workout and then we're doing comp-specific training, something crazy like that, I know it's going to hurt a lot. So it, it takes a lot of mental energy to to go through it because I know it it's kind of like the second marathon you run is the worst because you, you know, you know yeah, how much yeah, it's going to yeah. hurt. It's that mentality. I know how much I'm going to push and I know how much it's going to hurt and therefore I'm like sort of nervous about it. It's, it's kind of like if we did that Shark Tank thing again that we did you know, last week, I think it was, on Monday it would be worse than the first time because I would know how deep in the locker I'm going to go. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I, I think I've spoken about that before, but I still go through that every time. I'm like, fucking sometimes you'll see me, I'm sitting there like, you know, trying to, trying to process like, all right, let's go. Yeah. It's sometimes, I don't know, like I'm not into running, but let's say I went for a run and, you know, I do, I don't know, five Ks in whatever, let's say five Ks in 20 minutes, which is, Really good pace, okay, right? Very good, yeah. Which I can't do nowadays, but I would have done when I was younger and, and I would go running. But Shit. Anyway, like, you know, it's like you'll do something like that and then at the end it's kind of like I'm upset that I did it because then I'm like, oh, fuck, I just proved to myself that I can do it. So now next time when I don't do it in 20 minutes, I know I'm being a bitch, you know. It's <laughs> That's a really – running is a you know, really, really good analogy. Or like doing stair sets. You know, I'll do like five sets and it's like, fuck. Yeah. Now I know I'm capable of five. So if next time I come here, I only do four, I know I'm wussing out. And it doesn't get easier. Like with the, no. the running's perfect because five Ks, it would never, ever, ever get easier. You just get faster, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's always, it's it's like, always going to hurt. Yeah. It's always going to hurt. And that sometimes is jujitsu. It's always going to hurt. You, like in, in this context that we're talking about, like really hard, specific comp training, regardless, it's going to fucking suck. Maybe this time you go 12 rounds instead of 10 or like whatever in the middle. Yeah. But, you know, going back to when you when it's a small class, it might not be a comp class, right? It's just a small class. Okay. The same way that a good instructor is going to sort of mix it up and change things on the fly, you can as well as a student. Mm. So you rocked up wanting to work on whatever or work on this or maybe you wanted to have hard roles, but then – the appropriate training partners for you to do that didn't turn up we'll just mix it up on the fly okay well i was going to i was planning to have real hard intense rounds but no one my weight is here or no mm. one my belt is here okay well now i'm going to i'm going to just switch it up and be a bit more technique focused today i had you know? a question on that are you do you think it's disrespectful or rude to if if it's a regular roll regular round 6 minutes whatever and you say to your partner can we do uh, guard passing specific. So every time I pass, we reset. Is that okay with you? And then, you know, they, they agree with it or whatever. I think it's a bit, you know, it's, yeah, I don't think, unless it's because of an injury or something or because it's, oh, I'm specific, like I've got this comp next week and I specifically want to do this. Like, because when you do that, you're, you're asking to some, you're essentially saying, hey man, my training is a bit more important than you yours. So do you mind sacrificing your training to do this? Cause it's what I want to do. Yeah. You know, like but the alternative is I'm going to smash you. You're going to be on the bottom for six minutes. <laughs> well, well, you know, <laughs> I get what you mean. That, yeah, I mean, understand. that's part of their training too, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, know? you gotta, you gotta feel this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm helping so, you. <laughs> yeah. Neil so Mellon. I think in, unless it's because it's, oh, I've got an injury. So, can we only do this? And once okay. we get out okay. of that position reset, otherwise you're kind of, you know, like maybe they've been chomping at the bit to just have regular roles. You don't know. Maybe the last 10 classes in a row they've turned up to have been specific training. Yeah, got you. And they're like, fuck, I just want to have a freaking regular role. Yeah, got you. Whether got it's you. getting smashed or not, they just want to have a regular role. Right. So you're kind of asking them to sacrifice their training for yours. I've only done that with Nick. Like with that very specific example yeah. is play because he plays guard and whenever yeah. I pass his guard, like 
it, it, because of our weight difference, it's it's a hard time for him in, yeah. to get, get well, out. And just like half ass let him regard. Like, don't let him really. Just don't let him. Let him think he did a sweet ass <laughs> Nah, Rico. fuck that. <laughs> he needs to know if we reset. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that noise. Uh, I I give it that away. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, kidding. Nick's, yeah. Nick's fucking getting so good, man. Yeah, I know. He's well, yeah, we we're talking about how mad you got when he passed you. Okay, not, not happening again. Yeah. It's not happening again. Fuck that little French man. Fuck that noise. Yeah. Yeah. And they, Barely know he's French, would you? Barely know he's French. Oh, well, he's kind of like. French. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't know if both his parents are French. Actually, I'm not sure. Anyway, he doesn't say much. How can yeah. you tell? Ah, uh, yeah. He smiles sometimes. He talks to me, bro. I don't yeah. know about you. Yeah, he doesn't. But yeah, he doesn't talk to me. Bro. Doesn't even say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a blue belt. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Nick him a friend. <laughs> uh, when's the next grading, bro? Never. <laughs> the gym has been so empty since the grading. Worst time to ask. That I'm never doing another one. Excellent. Never doing another Excellent. one. We had Ollie. Ollie said to me. A purple belt. A purple belt. So Ollie said to me, I think on Monday, he goes, he goes, man, Ollie usually trains, you know, pretty consistent. He's nursing a bit of an injury at the moment, but he's yeah, pretty consistent, one. like more or less trains every day ish. Mm. And, and he's like, man, gym was, Jim was real dead last week. And I was like, yeah, I know. How many times did you train? He goes, twice. I'm like, <laughs> you're part of the problem, Molly. Like you're someone who's usually in there four or five days yeah. a week. So if, if you and everyone else has reduced their attendance by 50, 60%, yep. what do you think's going to happen? The gym's going to be dead. Then we got all those people who train twice a week and they're only turning up once, if at all. Mm. Yeah, you're part of the problem, Ollie. Don't sit here and be like, man, I had gym's dead. I didn't turn up, but the gym's dead. <laughs> Brandon asked me like uh, earlier this week, he was like, where were you last week? I didn't, like you weren't even here. Like I haven't seen you at all. I'm like, bro, I've been training every fucking night. He's yeah. like, oh yeah, I'm doing mornings. I'm yeah. Like, what, the, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> and Brandon, <laughs> you idiot. just had a week off. Right. <laughs> he, he's like, so he, he started training mornings and he's asking me where I am. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he was genuine. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's funny. But um, but yeah, just to just to bring it back, guys. Like, when it's a small class, okay, you know, you're gonna have to follow the guidance of your instructor and however they're structuring the class. But even if they do just put a timer for you to do rolls, man, you don't need to have other people pump you up to train properly. Embrace that it's a small class, like a bunch of mates training at a friend's garage where they've got some mats, mm -hmm. you know. I'm sure there's lots of people who have done just rounds with friends at their house, especially during lockdowns and stuff. And you probably still trained really hard and with this sort of open mat vibe and had heaps of fun. And yeah. so it doesn't need to be a full pumping class for you to have good training. Right? Yeah, it helps and it's a little easier to get motivated and psyched, but have some you know, discipline about you. Have some discipline, bro. Mm. Just get in there. And if you, you know, if you wanted to go hard and no one, you don't have that appropriate training partner, like, I don't know. It's like, it's almost like, you know, the show MasterChef? Yeah, I know of. You know of, right? So most people probably do. Anyway, they've got like 8,000 seasons nowadays. They have um, like one of the segments, I guess you would call it, is like uh, called a mystery box. Have you heard of this? No? You have no idea what I'm talking about? No, nah, but I'm, I'm with it. So – there's like ingredients in the box? Yeah. Got so it. it's like, you know, I don't know, they get 30 minutes or whatever and it's a mystery box. So like they don't know. So I'm told it's a reality TV. So I can't tell you how much of it's staged, but <laughs> they essentially, oh, yeah, they essentially open the box and it's mystery ingredients. Right. And then they've got to make a dish in an hour or whatever it is. So it's like that, man, you know, your, your training partners are a mystery box. Maybe you get to the gym, you open it, and you're like, well, fuck, I was going to make chicken soup, but that's a steak. Yeah. Right? So steak deal, soup it is. <laughs> deal with it, right? <laughs> Just, you know, change your training a little bit on the fly as well. 100%. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, it's It seems obvious, but sometimes people need to hear it. Dude, people always need to hear it. Mm. That's why they're listening to a podcast because they like to hear shit. With their ears. <laughs> And if you like to hear your own question on the Beyond Jiu Jitsu podcast, you can submit an audio question. You can do so via the link tree in our Instagram bio. So go to our Instagram at Beyond Jiu Jitsu underscore podcast. We have awesome 
awesome content on Instagram. Adam is the Instagram guru. He loves Dude, it. Dude, I love Instagram and social media. Episode 87, we spoke a lot about how yeah. much I love Instagram. So go back to that and listen to Instagram so special 87. But submit your question to the show and we want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. I really do. Yeah. Because I'm sick of hearing Kieran's voice. <laughs> We need, to, we need to fill this void a little bit more with other bit. people's voices. Yeah, just voices. just send in an audio question. You could just read a nursery rhyme. Yeah, just read the newspaper. Yeah, the, the local newspaper. Just read it for twenty minutes. We'll play it. We'll play it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we're like, wow, man, I got the most downloads out of any episode. <laughs> Ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, please still train when it's a small class. Still, so much that can be done. Right. There's. You don't need to have a, a, a room full of training partners. Yeah, it helps, but it's not going to be the case every day. Even at my gym in Brazil that was a gym with 500 members, some days you would turn up and you're like, there's fucking three of us here. Mm. Like sometimes it just happens anyway, mm. but we still trained, still trained hard. It just meant you do more rounds with the same person than you typically would. It's all good in the hood, man. Just train. I'm going to be there. Kieran, going to tap you tonight.